Hey guys, welcome. Did you hear that tasty outside lick going from the one chord to a four chord in a blues? Well, outside playing is a really nice addition to any guitarist slip bag. And in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how you can start creating your own outside sounds. Okay, so let's get to it. So what do I mean by playing an outside lick going to the four chord? Well, Firstly, we need to understand what's going on in our harmony. So here's our 12 bar blues chord chart in the key of A. And I'm specifically talking about the transition from bar four into bar five, which is where the change from the one chord into the four chord arises. So why do I want to play anything leading to a chord in the first place? Why don't I just play minor pentatonic shape one and be done with it? And although there's nothing wrong with that, you can run out of ideas pretty quick. And one of the main components of a great improviser is that they can take you on an emotive and a familiar journey within their solo. And one of the common things an improviser will do to achieve this is by playing the harmony within the solo. And occasionally they will add outside licks that create a little bit of tension and then release within their solo, which is precisely what we do in harmony as well. You will often hear tension and release in harmony as it makes the harmony stronger. On the other hand, however, a lot of guitarists go down this rabbit hole of outside playing and forget that playing inside is more important. Outside playing is only there to add a moment of tension. I think it's really important that you spend the majority of your time learning to play beautiful inside licks. But as a guitarist, we want to leave no stone unturned. So it's really important we have an understanding of playing outside and it sounds really cool. I personally love it. So let's dive in and see how we can develop these sounds. So the first thing we need to understand are target notes. Target notes are notes that are directly derived from the chords in the harmony. For instance, we are in A7 and the target notes of an A7 would be the root, the third, the fifth and the flat seventh of an A7 chord, which would be an A, a C sharp, an E, and a G. However, the easiest way to get to grips with target notes is to start with triads. And because we are in a dominant blues progression, we can play major triads over all three of our chords, A, seven, D7 and E7. So our A major triad would be the notes A, C sharp and E. Our major triad for D7 would be D, F sharp and A. And our major triad for E7 would be E, G sharp, B. So because we are playing the blues in the key of A, I am going to stick to our fifth position on the guitar. So what I want to do first is I want to learn our A major arpeggio, our D major arpeggio, and our E major arpeggio in the fifth position. As it's going to be easier for us to make this sound as natural as possible when it's in the same position on the guitar. So let's learn these three arpeggios in two octaves around the fifth position. So now that I know my three arpeggios, I'm going to play a blues. And when the A7 hits, I'm gonna play the A major arpeggio. And when the D7 hits, I'm gonna play the D major arpeggio. And when the E7 hits, I'm going to play the E major arpeggio. The trick is to make it sound as natural as possible. So I'm really going to try and be as musical and I'm going to try and intertwine it with lovely blues licks.
Okay, so step number two. Now that we have a good understanding of playing over the basic changes in a blues progression, it's time to see what happens when a blues composition has tension in it. Typically, tension comes in the form of altered seven chords, for example, A7 flat 13, or chromaticism within the harmony, for example, playing a D flat 7 before playing a D7. We're going to take a look at this A7 flat 13. What I'm going to do to add tension within the harmony of our blues progression is I'm going to add an A7 flat 13 just before I go to our D7. So A7, A7 flat 13, D7. So essentially what I am doing is I am adding chromaticism between the fifth of an A7 and the third of the D7. So the fifth of an A7 is E and then the flat 13 of A7 flat 13 is F and then the third of D7 is F sharp. So you can hear this chromatic line when I transition between these three chords. So this is functional tension within our harmony. It's got purpose and meaning. Okay, step number three. What to do with this tension. So when I hear this A7 flat 13, aka an altered chord, I want to be able to play that in my solo. And the easiest way to play over an altered chord in a solo is to play an altered scale. Let's take a look at the spelling of an altered scale. We have the root, we have the flat nine, we have the sharp nine, we have a third, we have a flat five, we have a flat thirteenth, and we have a flat seven. So within that scale, we have got the notes for every single altered chord. We have got the root, we have got the third, and we have got the flat seventh, which are our main tones within a seventh chord. Then we have a flat nine, a sharp nine, a flat five, a flat thirteenth, which are all our additions we make to seventh chords to make them altered chords. So this makes the altered scale a perfect candidate to play over an altered chord. Let's take a look at how to play this scale. Okay, so now we know how to play this scale in the key of A. I'm going to play our blues again with our additional altered chord and when that A7 flat 13 hits in the harmony, I'm going to play that altered scale. Okay, so there we have it. We now have the basic building blocks to play outside sounds. So, experiment with it. Create your own tension and release within your blues progressions. And remember that even if the blues progression doesn't have any altered chords in it, you can always imply the altered chord sound within your solo by playing the altered scale. This is all fodder for your practice. And the key is really to experiment and use your ear and get something sounding good. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.